Now recently you've uh, been seeing uh, a few videos where I've been prototyping making a uh, Yagi with this uh, panel element here and I now want to, um, before we go on to the, uh, the builds that um, I'm going to be doing from the information I've gleaned from all those uh, little prototypes, I just wanted to explain a uh, couple of things uh, on here and then over on the test bench as well. Um, it really became a head scratcher, I have to say. Um, my ultimate goal, as I said, was to, to build a, a Yagi that would uh, go inside a uh, waveguide. Um, you know, that's that's what I was hoping for. And um, this is the uh, basically the panel uh, antenna, the uh, little driven element here that I came up with. And this is what I eventually made from uh, the information gleaned from this. A nice simple uh, little panel antenna. Um, I mean this is a nice antenna on its own. I probably will in the future do uh, a quick video showing you how to uh, make this simple version here. But uh, the ultimate goal was to place this inside a uh, waveguide tube and you know get more gain out of it and uh, hopefully improve on the uh, little monopole driven element in a uh, can. So let me take this over to the test bench and I'll show you the uh, centre frequency of this at 2.4 gigahertz and then what I'll do is I'll show you the problem that I encountered, the uh, serious head scratching part shall we say. Now here is the uh, little antenna that I eventually uh, came up with then here on the test bench and uh, you can see it on the network analyzer do this all in one take it looks pretty good I mean uh, we've got the cursor there and the cursor's there on 2.435 gigahertz nice low return loss and uh, yeah it looks pretty good I mean uh, you think yeah very nice for 2.4 gigahertz but the problem comes when you stick this inside a waveguide now the intention of this was to build a uh, small waveguide, especially one that you could put on uh, to a satellite dish if you wanted to. So I've, for a long time I've been uh, trying to come up with ways um, to add a different driven element to a cantenna rather than just a simple monopole one. And we've had some successes with Yagi in a can and a few other uh, ideas, but nothing spectacular, nothing that would say yeah this really does kick the arse of uh, a normal cantenna and uh, this was my goal um, to add a different driven element inside a waveguide and also eventually uh, add a uh, Yagi elements to that as well to get even more range so I've got the uh, antenna here on the test bench you've just seen uh, the way it looks on the network analyzer but now what I'm going to do is place some waveguide tubing around that, it's not touching in any way and look what happens over on the network analyzer so now if I move the cursor it's all the way down here and now it is at uh, 2.16 gigahertz uh, slightly lower return loss but uh, yeah we've completely shifted the frequency and this caused me a lot of head scratching what I'll do I'll just move the waveguide out of the way again and it will return to its original position all the way over there and then if I place the waveguide back on again you'll see that it shifts the frequency again all the way to 2 0.1 gigahertz so that's not good for uh, the Wi-Fi spectrum and this caused me a lot of head scratching to try and work out what was going on here so as you saw uh, on the test bench uh, it doesn't perform well inside a uh, waveguide tube and uh, as I said this had me scratching my head for quite some time and a lot of prototypes a lot of uh, you know changing uh, the diameters of this uh, little uh, 
driven element here I eventually found the one that works the best inside a waveguide is this here now you can see the size difference between those two <laughs> took me a lot of chopping a lot of cutting and a lot of prototypes to get down to this size um, the distance as well from the waveguide it needs to be a little bit different you'll probably see this is one designed to fit inside the waveguide and there's a little bit more di distance between uh, the back of uh, the reflector here than uh, this one here this works beautifully inside uh, a waveguide tube but you can see the complete difference in size it really is uh, you know it really does stand out to you and this is why I wanted to make a separate video because uh, it also proves it's not just all about uh, the wavelength of something there's so many different factors come into uh, choosing uh, the size of the wavelength you're going to need for the frequency you want so let me go over to the test bench now hook this one up and uh, I'll show you this over on the network analyzer so here we have uh, the uh, smaller driven element then connected up to the network analyzer and if I show you try and do this in one take flip through to the network analyzer I've got the cursor on uh, the frequency that we want to hit for uh, 2.44 gigahertz let's say around that area and you can see we've got nothing there and in fact this little antenna has a, uh, a center frequency of something like uh, four and a half gigahertz it's it's uh, really really small I can't remember what it is now but uh, you can see there's absolutely nothing on there at the moment and what I'm going to do is now I'm going to place the tube in over the driven element just like I did with the last one and we watch the uh, network analyzer and watch the frequency change So there we have it then, a uh, really nice centre frequency there at 2.44 gigahertz, uh, a nice return loss figure as well, beautifully working exactly where we want it. So as I said the size differences really had my head scratching and the only thing that I can think of that can cause this kind of thing is capacitance you add capacitance to an antenna then the wavelength becomes shorter so somehow the tube whether it's uh, through capacitive coupling or whatever um, is adding capacitance to that main driven element and obviously because it's got capacitance it, it can be work at a smaller uh, length for the wavelength that you want and then we get a nice center frequency right at uh, 2.44 gigahertz there for the Wi-Fi spectrum so very nice now this is all well and good but now for the uh, second head scratching part that I had and uh, we've got this little uh, waveguide tube here working really well at 2.4 gigahertz there for the Wi-Fi spectrum yet yeah, happy days so next why don't we try and extend the tubing to give it a little bit more range you know make it a little bit longer um, as I said I wanted to keep this short length here if you wanted to add it to a satellite dish as a feed on there for instance but uh, possibly as a standalone um, add a little bit more range by extending the tubing out but then I hit my second problem so this length of tubing here at the moment is just over uh, one full wavelength at 2.4 gigahertz it's 134 millimeters long and you want to either have it at one full wavelength at uh, 126 millimeters to around 13436 no more than that and uh, definitely no less than that uh, it's a very small window that this will operate in so I've got uh, a piece of tube in here this is another half wavelength of uh, the uh, waveguide now look what happens when I stick this on the end to try and extend this let me uh, move it over to the network analyzer so you can have a look over there and we've got it nice and centered on 244 gigahertz there so I'll put the tubing on now look what happens the frequency 
shifts again. It's just small, but it's enough to make uh, this uh, the performance of this antenna be a little bit less. Now, there, we've got it on uh, 2.39 gigahertz. It's going to perform poor for the Wi-Fi spectrum if I move it away. It jumps back to its original position. So it can only be capacitance that is affecting the size of the driven element. More capacitance means we need to make the driven element even smaller because what it's doing, it's jumping up in frequency. So to make it work, you probably need to trim off a millimetre or so on the edges of this driven element to make this work with a longer waveguide length. So plenty of head scratching then with this uh, particular design, but uh, we'll get there in the end. Let me take you over to the uh, test bench, there, sorry, the uh, other bench, and I'll show you some of the other ideas that I've came up with. Now, of course, this is all very well, but my original intention was to build a uh, Yagi in a can, let's say, uh, as well as looking at a different driven element for a waveguide. And uh, you know how I like adjustable uh, things uh, over on the test bench so we don't have to uh, make multiple different prototypes. So I made these up where I can adjust the distance uh, away from the, the back reflector with uh, the main driven elements and move them along. Uh, this one is another one. I have to be careful because I've used it quite a few times. It's in a, it's in a sorry state at the minute, let's say. But this is a Yagi based again off my original prototypes and this one works really well. Um, and you may be thinking, well, there's quite a bit of distance away from the back reflector there compared to uh, these original ones that I came up with. And that's because I wanted to fit it in this tube here, which is uh, around 270 millimeters long, quite a long tube. Uh, narrower than the tube that I normally uh, use for a waveguide, the same diameter tubing that we've been using so far with this prototype. And I wanted to build this as a uh, Yagi in a can to differentiate it away from uh, my more traditional uh, waveguide cantennas. And what I found was that um, changing this distance along here really does make a difference with the length of the tubing. As you saw when we increased the length of the tubing over on the test bench the frequency uh, changed and uh, made that frequency a little bit lower um, knocked it off centre frequency but I found you could tune that in by uh, changing the distance from uh, the driven element to the back reflector so the back of the can and the driven element in this one is around uh, this distance here and then again to uh, get that gain in there because what I was finding is it's all very well putting a driven element in here but it performed exactly the same as the short ones it didn't give me any more gain no improvement wasn't bad but um, there was no difference between having the uh, longer length than having the shorter length and that's when I started adding the uh, parasitic elements of uh, the Yagi so in here we've got parasitic elements just like we've got on this prototype we've just got a greater distance from here to here and they run all the way up the can there and this works really nice but I'm still not happy with it I've still got some tweaking to do because there's quite a few spurs it's not a nice clean uh, frequency response over on the network analyzer and I think that's more to do with the distance that I've got it in here that I need to work on and uh, possibly shave a little bit off the driven element as well but the parasitic elements I'm happy with running all the inside of here so let me hook this one up and I'll show you it over on the network analyzer because I have to say six seven years ago before I got all the test equipment and if I just hooked this up and did a uh, Wi-Fi scan I'd probably re be really really happy with it but um, as a receiving antenna when you see the spurs and everything else uh, you can probably see why um, I want to do some more work on this one so here is the Yagi Cantenna on the test bench then. Now let me take you over to the network analyzer. You can see the problem that I've got with it. 
So here we are then on the network analyzer. You can see we've got a nice spike there around 2.4 gigahertz, but we've also got all these little spurs along here, and I just don't like them. Um, as a receiving antenna, if I were to just do a Wi Fi scan, it would look pretty good, um, you know, it'd be no problem at all. But as a transmitting antenna, all these little spikes are going to cause problems, and they're just not nice. I want to get rid of all these spurs and spikes here and maybe open up this area a little bit wider for the Wi-Fi spectrum so you can see why I'm not happy with it but as I said you know six seven years ago I wouldn't have had a clue and I would have thought yeah it's a nice antenna it's uh, picking up 20 30 Wi-Fi hotspots but that's only half the picture and this is showing you the half that uh, you wouldn't pick up just doing something like that so I hope you found this uh, little uh, explanation of uh, where the prototyping of this Yagi from where it started with the last few videos I've released to where it is today. Still not finished with it by no means, I've still got some ideas. Um, but I am ready to show you a build for this short one here with uh, the single driven element and it really does perform nice. This uh, short one here performs just as well as the uh, longer cantenna so i'm really pleased with that definite um, upgrade on the driven element there but uh, i also wanted to include this information as well uh, because there's such a disparity between the size of uh, a working driven element inside this can due to uh, capacitance that people would say and and I've been on YouTube over 10 years now and some of my earlier videos I still get people leaving comments saying uh, you know everybody knows uh, wavelength 2.4 gigahertz is 126 millimeters when uh, I've been using a shorter um, length on some designs and this is the reason why if it was that simple then people just wouldn't bother studying this subject but um, yeah it is it is amazing and it sticking it inside the tube does add a hell of a lot of capacitance I wouldn't have thought it would have affected it um, you know in such a big big way that's why I was uh, scratching my head for uh, quite some time but uh, yeah as a single driven element in a uh, short can like this adding a Yagi to this by the way makes no difference whatsoever you're just completely wasting your time doesn't add any performance factor to this but it is a nice size to uh, have um, just small and compact and uh, pretty powerful and uh, also it's just the right size to add to a dish so I'll be doing that one first and then as I say the actual Yagi in a can I've still got a little bit of work to do to perfect that but uh, things are looking really really good and uh, hopefully uh, I've answered some of the questions here that uh, I won't be including in the build videos obviously to keep those a little bit shorter but um, still a lot to learn still a lot of unknowns about this that I don't know myself I'm still reading uh, quite a few books about it, but been very, very interesting uh, the last 18 months prototyping this on and off. Um, not every week, um, but you know, coming back to it every now and again. Um, a lot of head scratching, but it's been very, very enjoyable. And I hope to bring you the build for this one very, very soon. So if you did enjoy this video, please uh, give it a thumbs up. Hopefully I've answered quite a few questions there. Um, let me know in the comments what you think um, you know I mean uh, the capacitance difference between the uh, driven elements by sticking them in the tube hopefully I've shown you that clear enough over on the test bench and uh, how it affects things um, I find it really interesting hopefully you do too and hopefully you'll join me on the next one